Hey everyone, we've been granted some really good weather this morning, so let's use this opportunity to get the second video in our series for the rust bucket rebuild. Stick around through the intro, and we'll see you on the other side. All right, and we're back everyone. Like always, I really appreciate you joining us. It's good to see your beautiful faces here watching our videos. And I wanted to take this time to, like always, just say thank you. Before we get started, I wanted to talk about some of the new tools I just purchased uh, right before making this. Quick little clip here. I ran up to Harbor Freight and picked up a uh, Bauer model impact wrench. So far, so good. I would highly recommend it for the money. It is gonna provide you tons of power, whether you're pulling wheels off of your truck or like a lag bolt into some wood or even driving like tap cons into concrete. This, this thing can do just about whatever you need it to, which is a great improvement over the blood, sweat and tears we had off camera filming the first video that we put together. So just looking at the framework here, you can see where the majority of the damage is gonna be. Uh, the little Swiss cheese part on the left and right hand side are primarily caused by water sitting inside the frame. Uh, they probably kept it flat on the ground and that water just puddled up time after time and uh, just did a number on it. Also, I'm, I wouldn't doubt that when they were running it in the fields because of how much sand we have in our uh, regional area here in Northeast Florida, it was probably just like a sandblaster just destroying it. Uh, you've got limbs and roots and everything that are gonna be slapping up against the bottom of it. So it's not surprising that it's in the condition that it's in. I think the uh, prognosis here is we're probably going to cut out all of the uh, rotten pieces of steel and then where we can clean up and weld a really nice thick uh, steel plate on the bottom to give it the rigidity and also give it the kind of armor or the strength for any future use. Uh, also while we're looking at it here you can tell that there's two vertical members on the, on the bottom and top side of the framework and that is where your corkscrew is gonna run up and down that changes the direction of your disc gangs. I've got an idea on re-engineering the way it's built, just looking at some of the newer disc cars that are out there, going from a corkscrew style to a pin style. I'm not exactly sure if I wanna to try to take on that during this project or tackle it sometime in the future. While we still got the frame upside down, I'm gonna get the front portion up on top of these saw horses and we're gonna begin taking off the front lift assembly. This A-frame portion here is what hooks up to the three-point hitch, and what I'm trying to pull the nut off of is the category one lift pin. I'm gonna add a bracket to the right of the bracket you see here, my hand on, and then also another bracket to the left. And we're gonna go back and do very similar to what my box blade has, and it's just gonna be a pin that's gonna run through both brackets and then be locked in place on the inside. So that when we go to pull through some really harsh material, it doesn't put so much stress on that single brackets you see there. Okay, so here we have the front portion of the disc frame and we can look at the top of it right here. Everything looks to be in pretty good shape. And I don't know if you remember from the last video, but the bottom side has kind of got a little bit of a look like that right there where it's all rotted out. And that's where we'll be doing the major repair on the frame. But we've got most of the parts pulled off of it that could be pulled off. The rest of it is pretty much welded together. So everything's looking pretty good. As you can see, the corkscrew portion here that I had just pulled out had a roll pin. See right there. I ended up having to take a chisel and just clipping the edge of it. We'll have to go back and drill that out and get a new roll pin to put in. And there's another roll pin right there that you can see. We'll probably just clean that one up. There's no reason to remove that. But what that does is when it when it fits in here through the frame, okay. And then when you look down, that prevents it from pulling out while you're using it. And then what this corkscrew does, if you're unfamiliar with it, you can loosen it or tighten it. And then those arms right here will become you know, slightly more aggressive, or you can back them out to run them more straight. And that's gonna change the angle of your disc if we're running them straight or if we're running them on an angle. The more of an angle you get it, you're gonna get more of a cutting and rolling that dirt over on top of itself. 
All right, so in the essence of time, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at one of these disc packs. I'm gonna go over a little bit of information. Uh, So we'll just we'll just do little pieces at a time. I'll try to get everything out of this disc pack uh, cleaned up and ready for paint, and get an idea of a color scheme, and then we'll just work it from there. We'll just have to do it piece by piece. So thank you again for joining us. I hope you all really enjoyed it. Uh, I did. I'm glad we got this done. I, I got to buy some extra tools that I didn't have to get this project uh, moving a little bit quicker. So that definitely helped out today and cut our time down significantly so if you haven't already please give us a subscribe uh, shoot this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it don't be afraid to share it either um, i haven't really mentioned that in the past but if you kind of like the content we're doing and you want to help us grow the channel uh, hitting the share button or you know if you've got someone that's kind of in the same boat where they've got a piece of equipment and they're thinking about investing in some new attachments but they may have one that they can kind of go through this process. This would be a great video for them to kind of look at and get an idea of what they're in for. Um, I'm really excited to continue the project, and I hope you are too. So thank you again for stopping by, and we'll see you on the next one.